Hey everyone. So in the last video, we set up the Keynesian cross model. We said that we're now going to distinguish between income and planned expenditure. So planned expenditure is going to be consumption plus investment plus government spending. And our equilibrium in this model is that expenditure was going to be equal to income. PE was going to be equal to Y. We said that this theory primarily came out of the Great Depression. And what this theory would say, what John Maynard Keynes said in the Depression, was that there wasn't enough spending, that unemployment was so high and output was so low because people weren't spending enough. And so to get out of the Great Depression, we were gonna to have to try to find a way to increase spending. Now that's really difficult because consumption is only a function of income or disposable income. And income being low was the problem in the first place. Investment is essentially exogenous. We're not really trying to explain that right now. So the only way to really change spending was to change government spending. And so Keynes's policy recommendation was that if we increase government spending, we can get the economy moving again. We can get people spending again, and that should raise income. And so higher government spending in this model is going to look like a higher level of planned expenditure. It's going to shift that entire curve upwards. So if we were initially at PE1 with C plus I plus G1, we're now going to move to this higher level of government spending with C plus I plus G2. And that's gonna shift this entire curve upwards by the amount of increase in government spending. So basically the government starts to increase spending and that shifts the total planned expenditure for an economy upwards. And when it shifts the economy upwards, it increases total spending. It does a pretty good job of increasing spending. So we're going to move to Y2. But you'll notice that the change in Y, the difference between Y1 and Y2, is greater than the change in G. That our total spending went up by more than just government spending. And that's because government spending raised income, which raised consumption. And with higher consumption, that means we have higher spending and therefore higher income. And this government spending fed on itself and increased total income. And so if we were initially at this point, Y1, this increase in government spending kind of surprised businesses. It meant that they had to dip into their inventories. There was an unplanned drop in inventory. And when there's just unplanned drop in inventory, the only way that businesses can respond is to increase output. They can try to compensate by just raising production. So firms are gonna to have to increase output in response. And when firms increase output, that means we're gonna to rise to this new equilibrium Y2. The firms are going to respond to this decrease in inventory by trying to replenish inventories and in increasing output and therefore income. So income is going to rise to a new equilibrium. And so this increase in government spending having a greater effect on income than just that initial delta G, that means there's going to have to be some kind of multiplier effect associated with government spending. And we can try to calculate that based on the equations that we have so far. And so if we start with this initial equilibrium condition that Y is equal to C plus I plus G, we can convert that to growth rates or, or to changes. So the change in income is just going to be the change in consumption plus the change in investment plus the change in G. Now we know that investment is essentially exogenous. It's not really going to move. So the only things that are going to move in response to this are consumption and government spending. Now because consumption is a function of income, 
consumption is going to go up by that marginal propensity to consume times the increase in income. And so the total increase in income is going to be delta G plus the marginal propensity to consume times that increase in income. And so we can simply solve from here for delta Y. And so the total increase in income is going to be one over one minus the marginal propensity to consume times the change in government spending. Basically what we're saying is that as long as people spend some kind of income, as long as their marginal propensity to consume is greater than zero but less than one, our total increase in income is going to be greater than our total increase in government spending. But delta Y is going to be greater than delta T. We're going to call this the government spending multiplier, the government purchases multiplier. And it's just that same principle, that an increase in income is going to be greater than that total increase in government spending. And so the ratio between the two is going to be delta Y over delta G is just 1 over 1 minus MPC. And so just as a simple example right here, a simple example would be, let's say that people spend 80% of their income, that their marginal propensity to consume is 0.8. So if their marginal propensity to consume is 0.8, how much extra income do we get from a $1 increase in government spending? That's just going to be that government spending multiplier, that 1 over 1 minus 0 0.8, or 5. So every time, according to this, if we have a marginal propensity to consume of 0.8, Every time government increases spending by $1, total income, Y, delta Y is going to be five. Total income is gonna increase by $5 for every dollar the government increases income. Now you're probably asking why government, why that multiplier is greater than one. And it's because of this kind of feedback loop. Because we have this initial increase in government spending causes an increase in income. But that increase in income also increases consumption. And when we increase consumption because y is equal to c plus i plus g, when c goes up, y goes up. And when y goes up, c goes up. And it starts to feed on itself and continues to feed on itself. So that this increase in g increases y. And that increase in y increases c, which increases y, which increases c, and so on and so forth. And so that final impact of the change in government spending is actually a lot greater than that initial change in government spending. And so we can actually see this, or see a similar concept if the government changes taxation. And so if instead, let's say we start at that same point. We start at that initial equilibrium Y1 with PE equal to C1 plus i plus g. So we have planned expenditure and income and our equilibrium condition. And so let's say that the government decreases taxes. Instead of increasing government spending, they decrease taxes. Well, a decrease in taxes is not going to change investment. Investment is exogenous. A decrease in taxes is also not going to change total government spending. Total government spending doesn't change in response to taxes, just the budget deficit. But the only thing that changes is consumption. Consumption is a function of disposable income. So when taxes go down, people's disposable income is naturally going to rise. And so when consumption rises, that's going to increase this whole planned expenditure curve. So we're going to shift to this new planned expenditure curve. PE is equal to C2 plus I plus G. And it's going to shift us to the right. This new income level, Y2. And so the change in consumption right here, delta C, is going to be equal to the marginal propensity to consume times the change in taxes. Basically, it's the rate at which people are spending all of that extra money that they now have instead of paying taxes. And again, you'll notice that delta C right here 
is smaller than delta y. That the total change in income is greater than that initial cut in taxes. So the story here is that we're initially at this point y1, just like we were before. And so initially, lower taxes will increase consumption. And therefore, planned expenditure, because planned expenditure is a function of consumption. But now, you have all these people out there spending money, right? Consumption has now increased. And so again, there's this same unplanned inventory drop. Suddenly businesses are selling all this extra stuff and the only way that they can respond to that is to increase output. So at Y1, there is an unplanned inventory drop. So the only way that businesses can respond to this is by increasing output. And thus income rises. From Y1 to Y2. And again, just like before, we can calculate how much this change in taxes is going to change total spending, right? We can try to find some kind of taxation multiplier by doing basically the same thing that we did before. So if we're gonna solve for delta y, we're gonna start with that same equilibrium condition. That change in y is gonna be the change in the components of y. Now, in this one, government spending does not change. And investment does not change. The only thing that taxes can influence is consumption. And so delta Y is going to be equal to delta C. Delta C is really just the marginal propensity to consume times the change in income minus the change in taxes. And so again, we'll see that same thing where a change in taxes increases total consumption, which increases income. And when income goes up, consumption is going to go up. And so we can solve this same thing for the change in y based on a change in taxation. And it's going to be negative the marginal propensity to consume over 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume. Now importantly, the multiplier here is negative. Basically, if we raise taxes, if delta t is greater than zero, income is going to go down. If we cut taxes, people are going to start to spend more and income is going to go up. And so our tax multiplier, the total amount of income increase or decrease from a change in taxes is gonna be just that, the negative marginal propensity to consume over one minus the marginal propensity to consume. And so if we take that same example where the marginal propensity to consume is 0.8, where everybody spends 80% of their income, then a $1 increase in taxation is gonna decrease output by $4 because that $1 increase in taxes is gonna cut total spending. And when total spending goes down, then income goes down. When income goes down, spending goes down and it feeds on itself again. So we see, again, a multiplier of greater than the absolute value and absolute value greater than one. And so the key takeaways from the taxation multiplier is that the tax multiplier is going to be negative, that as taxes go up, people now have less money to spend on traditional goods. When people have less money to spend, they're gonna reduce consumption. But it's still gonna be greater than one in absolute value. But this feedback loop that we talked about with government spending still exists. And so when taxes go up, consumption falls. When consumption falls, income falls. Income falling reduces consumption and so on and so forth. 
But importantly, the tax multiplier is smaller in absolute value than the government spending multiplier. The consumers are going to save some portion of a tax cut. And so some amount of that tax cut doesn't go to changing total income, right? Whereas a change in government spending both immediately affects income and in the roundabout way through consumption. And so this tax multiplier is going to be smaller than government than the government multiplier. So as a result, John Maynard Keynes in the Great Depression said that we needed to increase government spending and reduce taxes. That should get people to start spending more and should get the economy out of the Great Depression that it was in.